Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. The fresh chocolate chip cookie scent that can be smelled outside of the Magic Kingdom bakery is artificial. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Ectost. People ask Reddit. What's a big industry secret that isn't supposed to be known by the general public? Number 1. Commenter. I work at a hospital in an area where there are lots of hospitals. Our ER has an EMT lounge with free slushy soda and snack food so the EMTs choose our hospital when delivering patients. Person B. Can confirm. Of the four hospitals we run to, there is one that is the universal favorite. They have the best snacks and hottest ER nurses. They know it. They're shameless. Number 2. Commenter. If you get in a car accident, and your insurance tries telling you that you have to or that you should take your car to a specific repair facility to get repaired, tell them to go fist themselves. You have no obligation to any insurance company or repair facility. You can take your car to any body shop you like to have the repairs done, and it's against the law for insurance companies to tell you that you can. However, they often use tricky wording to make you feel like you have no say. Especially if you're a woman. Source, estimator and parts manager for a body shop. Person B. Also if a car repair shop tells you that you need to pay before they can give you your car back they can't. Tell them to send you the bill and only on the thing you told them to fix. If they say well we fixed that one other thing and it's going to cost $200 more. Tell them well I never agreed to this and I will not pay for it. Where I am they do it all the time. I went in for a normal oil change and checked up. You know because I want to know if there is anything wrong before I pay for it to be fixed. The guy then told me that he found a bunch of problems and went ahead and fixed them. I was like I never asked you to do that. He told me well we did it anyway to save you time. Here is the bill and it's like $500 more because of all the fixes. I told him that I was not paying for the fixes I never asked for. He said that if I don't pay he will not give me my car back. I called the police. It took two minutes they gave me my car back and the other charge on my bill magically vanished. Person C. Insurance worker here. You actually don't even need to get your damage fixed, you can just pocket the check depending on the type of accident. Paint damage? Submit estimates take money. Flood? If the car still works you can take the depreciated settlement minus owner retained salvage and get a salvage title. It's not normally the best option but you are allowed to do it. Number 3. Commenter. Customer service text chat can see what you're typing in the box before you hit send. Person B. I used to be a chat support rep and I would regularly have 3 to 4 chats running at a time. Customers are usually so slow to respond that it's really easy to manage, plus we have tons of pre-keyed responses so we rarely ever have to type. Control plus H hello, my name is underscore, how can I help you today? Control plus N please hold one moment while I look that up for you, etc. Until you get that one lightning typer throwing it off for everyone, but that guy is rare, most people on chat seem to type like 10 WPM. LOL. Person C. I worked in the cable industry for years, in everything from dispatch, support, commercial, and training. And unless you are the third or fourth person calling in with a flashing cable light issue, and my tools also show the note is down, I'm having you reset your modem to verify there is an issue. We had lots of tricks to tell if customers were actually doing what we asked them to. Customer, I don't have a router. Me, okay, let's go ahead and shut down your computer. Customer, okay, it's shut down. Me, while pinging their computer IP, sir I'm still getting a response from your computer. Mute button, you effing liar. Unmute, can you please follow the cord from the modem to your computer, and let me know what it's plugged into. Customer, oh there is a box here that says Linsky, and yes that is what I heard many times. I love not being in that field anymore. Person D. Depends on the system but I also know that T-Mobile has customer service access to your phone called Ada PT or something like that. Basically it allows customer service to have root access to your phone so they can help you better. Number 4. Commenter. Relative of mine was a mystery shopper and did a lot of car garages. He would get sent in with a car and had to get it serviced and reported on how well it was completed slash if they found all the faults slash if the customer service was up to scratch etc. The results were usually 6 tenths, until suddenly every garage was a 10 tenths continuously. He investigated as it was a bit suspicious and found me's, mystery shopper, written on the bottom of the car he was given. One of the garages sussed him out and wrote it there for future garages to find, and make sure they have it the best possible service. 
This generally refers to large car garages such as Skoda and Seat who work on their own model cars for their customers. Going to your local mechanic round the corner, he isn't going to expect a mystery shopper anytime soon. It's more the corporate garages who hire MY sirs. Person B. Servers in restaurants do this sort of thing too. If a guest has a reservation, but insists on going to the bar for a drink before sitting, regardless of any weight, the host flags them as shoppers and lets bartender slash server slash kitchen know, and suddenly those people get the best service ever. Number 5. Commenter. McGraw-Hill makes practically every textbook allowed in America's school. At the end of every year they throw away tens of thousands of books for the tax write-off because it's going to a recycling plant. I am talking textbooks for K-12, through college books of every type, teacher editions, and class sets of short stories and books for kids in the process of learning to read. A normal textbook costs a school 60 to 80 bucks a pop, but they throw enough away to educate every child in Africa. When I worked at the recycling plant I wasn't allowed to take them because it was considered illegal to distribute them. I truly lost all hope for the future of humanity after that. And quit my job. The place they sent to is called Medina Recycling in Neo Ohio. I seriously want to find a way to make this big news and trash McGraw Hill over it. It is also a two month period that is Medina Recycling's largest contract for profit. Person B. Doesn't surprise me. Slightly similar, but used to work for Hollywood Video back at the time when we made the full transition from VHS to DVD. Essentially we had to take all the tapes, put them in rubbish bags and throw them in the dumpster. Myself and a fellow employee asked if we could just donate them to some form of charity rather than throw them away. When told no, we simply waited till the end of the night, opened up the dumpster and took them all and dropped them off at a Salvation Army site. I'll be honest and say that I did keep all the 80s and 90s anime though, as well as VHS copies of Sweating to the Oldies and Time Out, early 90s info thing they showed in schools about AIDS. Number 6. Commenter. I attended a songwriting workshop at Berkeley School of Music, and Anna Wise, Grammy-winning songwriter, Kendrick Lamar collaborator, told the audience during a presentation that whenever someone magically blows up on SoundCloud or YouTube, that it's not authentic. A label will sign the artist in secret, and then suddenly boost their viewership tremendously to make it look like the independent artist did it on their own. Person B. Also, there are some clever tricks out there to make artists seem more independent than they are. The band Paramore was first signed to Atlantic, one of the biggest major labels ever, but their albums were released on indie label fueled by ramen in order to make them seem more punk or DIY. Person C. That's what happened with Fall Out Boy, and they realized how well that model worked so they used it around Panic. At the disco, Paramore, etc. Fob was essentially signed to Fiber, and then Atlantic bought most of the label, releasing Tig under it to appear indie. Paramore is a much more interesting story. The label actually only signed Haley. They then realized she would make more sense in a band, got the band back around her, and then pushed them on Fiber for the indie appearance. This is all when Vinny of Less Than Jake, Fiber founder, left the label. He was going to do basically a tell-all in alternative press, but it never came out. There's a lot more to it, of course, but that's the basic cliff note version. Source, I know the owner of a once extremely huge pop punk label in the early 00s. Number 7. Commenter. A bottle of Windex is basically 95% water, 4% ammonia, and 1% blue dye, fragrance. The most expensive part of the product is the bottle. Person B. This is the case for many consumer products. People often buy stuff because of packaging. Carbonated water and syrup in Coke made in bulk probably costs about 2C. Likewise beer itself is often not that expensive compared to the bottles it comes in. Person C. I own a window cleaning company. Most of us pro companies use a bucket of water with dish soap in it and a squeegee. It works great, smells great, lathers the windows enough to smoothly glide a squeegee across and leaves a shine on the windows. We use it on the homes and businesses of multimillionaires. Probably three times a day someone asks us what our magical solution is and they are shocked to hear dish soap. Then they tell us how they use vinegar, ammonia, Windex Act. All of that stuff works, but not as good as dish soap, and vinegar and ammonia stink. The best is when someone tells us we should use newspapers and ammonia. Apparently a long time ago when newspapers were made differently they had absorbent qualities that they no longer have. People still use them because their grandpa told them it worked or something ha, ha what a waste. Number 8. Commenter. The fresh chocolate chip cookie scent that can be smelled outside of the Magic Kingdom bakery is artificial. It's piped out there to draw you into the bakery. Person B. 
they're called smellitzers, they're like targeted scent cannons. Disney also cranks the AC up in the shops in the wintertime, so it feels colder than it actually is, and you think to yourself, man, I better get that Mickey sweatshirt or I'm gonna be freezing all day. Person C. I've heard McDonald's does something similar. On another Disney-related note though, the reason they have reddish sidewalks is to tire the red portion of your red-green photoreceptors in the eyes. When this happens, when you focus on something that's not red, you have a greenish after image. This makes people think Disney's grass is greener than it is. Person D. They also do things like generate sounds and plant trees or place buildings in specific places to keep all the land separate. So if you're hanging out over in Adventureland and you look back all you'll see is jungle and all you'll hear is jungle sounds, even though Main Street is like 10 feet away. On a related note, the entrance at Disneyland is specifically designed so that you can't see the park at all until you enter the tunnel. If there's one thing Disney does well, it's playing with people's senses to create immersion. Number 9. Commenter. My sister was on The Biggest Loser. Jillian and Bob were there two maybe three days a week. They make it seem like they live there. Person B. I was a contestant on The Biggest Loser. This is a fact. We mostly spend our days working out by ourselves, or with sub-trainers that the celebrity trainers send in. Person C. Similar for Extreme Makeover, Home Edition. The stars aren't here for more than one-third of the build, they show up at each end and then make brief appearances in the middle. Number 10. If you get involuntarily bumped from a flight you can get paid out 200-400% to of the flight's cost back depending on how late you get to your destination. If this happens to you they'll offer you a bunch of vouchers, but be persistent and they'll pay you out. If the airline arranges substitute transportation that is scheduled to arrive at your destination between 1 and 2 hours after your original arrival time, between 1 and 4 hours on international flights, the airline must pay you an amount equal to 200% of your one-way fare to your final destination that day, with a $650 maximum. If the substitute transportation is scheduled to get you to your destination more than 2 hours later, 4 hours internationally, or if the airline does not make any substitute travel arrangements for you, the compensation doubles, 400% of your one-way fare, $1,300 maximum. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.